although I don't know, we've seen a huge decline in the number of recording studios in Brisbane and probably in the rest of Australia as well. So, I don't know, in a way the artist isn't so much losing out too much, but it is the companies that are behind the artist that are losing their money. Because it used to be that you could just go to any recording studio in Brisbane, if you had the money, put it down on the desk, they'd let you do a demo, and then you'd use that demo to go and get a recording contract. That's the old way of doing it. But now, you know, because there's not as many recording studios, you're now relegated to the worlds of YouTube. And, you know, sound quality on YouTube, probably not the best. Well, and then you've got things like Skype and Audacity and, you know, all this. Yeah, but the thing is, they've been, people have been or have had um, in-home mixing boards and all this for really, really, really long time. So, you know, well, this is really nothing true. new. Uh I don't know. I mean, the the quality of the stuff you can get from a recording studio, I would imagine, would be a lot better because the tables they have there are so much more defined. Whereas to get something similar at home would cost you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Which I know a couple of people who have managed to do it. Um, there's one artist in particular that I'm really, really good friends with, and he's um, English. He lives in Ireland. Um, his band's name is Emotional Arsonist. And when you listen to the stuff that he um, did at home, you can't tell the difference between something you'd get in a recorded studio and the fact that he did this at home. I mean, he did it right there in his home. Well, that's true. And then you've sort of got your whole X Factor, Australian American Idol, you know, Australia or America's Got Talent, blah, 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 blah. Ring in mm-hmm. and tell us who you don't like. So, you know, it really gets a bit crazy. So It's just another way for these greedy people to... I mean, and the thing is, people were pirating a long, long time ago. But it wasn't until big band names like Metallica and all this popped up that they even took notice. Like there was, um, I think it was Napster was the program that radio stations would use. I mean, everyone used some sort of pirating program like LimeWire or BearShare or you know, something. And when Metallica stepped up and threw this big hissy fit about it, mm. that's when, you know, the FBI stepped in and, you know, it became illegal and all this. So, you know, it wasn't until these big names started saying anything. It's because Metallica was losing money. I'm like, yeah, you've been running for how long? You probably have, like, millions <clears throat> in storage that you could literally just go, oh, here you go, here's a million dollars. I don't need it. Exactly. Not to mention, you know, they probably spent so much time in court that they didn't actually make a really good album for the next one anyway. You know, because well, the last I'm not couple... I'm really a big fan of Metallica anyway, so... Well, apparently on their last Australian tour... They got up and they said, well, we realised that the last album was shit, so let's play some old stuff. <laughs> and they played all their old albums, literally. I mean, I wasn't there, wow. but a friend of a friend was there, and I'm thinking, well, that's kind of weird. You know, why the hell would you go out and tour this album if you were only going to go back through and play your old stuff? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I mean, I've never really agreed with the piracy laws anyway, but, I mean... <sighs> You just have, in my opinion, you would get more people interested in you if the piracy laws were more open. Yeah. I mean, you know, being able to put them on YouTube, you could go, hey, look, I found this awesome song. Go listen to it. And everyone's done that. Exactly. And I mean, who didn't sit in their rooms during the 80s and the 90s? Well, you probably didn't because you weren't born then. But, um, you know, and sat there with the radio and a cassette player. And you're recording the songs that you want and getting rid of the DJ because the DJs back then sucked. I did. See, I did that too. So that's a form of piracy, technically. Technically speaking. And, you know, they didn't do anything about that. They couldn't. There was no way to do it because people did it on such a massive scale. Exactly. I mean, the songs we play on our show, you know, I'm not saying that's piracy. Arr. But, you know, it's giving people exposure. And that's what they're sort of asking for. Exactly. I mean... Think about it. You're talking, okay, the internet itself is practically 
endless. You have endless possibilities. If you know, if you put out a CD, well, not everyone is going to go to a record store where it's available, especially when you get down to like international music. You know, like Rammstein, which is German, or you know, some other things from England. All this. Mm, it's t- a little harder in t- translation. I tell you, the band that I'm looking for that has not come out here yet is Amaranthi. I'm looking in all the stores, and it's nowhere. I would love that. Oh, my God. But see, exactly. It's little bands like that. You know, and for those of you who have not heard of Amaranth, definitely go look it up. It is, oh, their music is like the most perfect mixture of every type of music you could possibly like. It's got a little bit of the screaming and the techno and the pretty harmonics. It's amazing. And they actually, they caught on to the YouTube thing and have posted their entire album onto YouTube. Exactly. But, you know, me being me, I don't want to take it from YouTube. I want to buy their album. I want something physical in my hands. And I'm not so much of a fan of YouTube because I don't get something for my money in my hand. You know, my computer dies. I've got to go and get it all again. Exactly. So, you know, I'd rather not. I'd like a CD. Thank you very much. Yes, but I mean, you know, so all these big bands and, you know, the shows, even shows are starting to get more publicity and all this. So they're not losing money, not really, because I know a lot of people who watch, like when Doctor Who premieres in England or, you know, whatever, they go and watch it online um, a few hours after England gets it, and then they um, will tune in to watch it on TV. Just well, again, they're... Doctor Who is one of the shows where you pretty much have to watch it twice. Once for the shock value, twice for the humor. Exactly. You watch it once on your computer for the shock value. You watch it on your TV. Granted, you have commercial breaks. Well, here you do. But you still get to enjoy it so much more. Yeah. I don't know. And you can find little clips and you can pass them on to people and say, here, watch this show. Exactly. That's like me giving you the, um, what do they call it, the shorts after the program that we get. You don't get them. Mm-mm. You know, I think it's Doctor Who Confidential or whatever the hell they call it. So you don't get yeah. that. I get that. No. And it's a lot of fun because, you know, like that one that I showed you last time, it has a lot of really bad jokes in it. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're going against the grain in that clip. And they tried not to make it corny. <laughs> yeah. But um, they completely really blew at it. But anyway. Mm-hmm. So, yes, that's our views on piracy. <laughs> yeah. Arr. Arr, matey. Yeah. Landlubber. Yeah, crickets chirping. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's turn. Okay, Nicolas Cage is a vampire. <laughs> There's a segue. <laughs> eBay seller has proof for $1 million. And we're going to hopefully post the link for this in the chat room, sort of right, right about maybe now. Now. Yeah, September 19. A Civil War era photograph of Nicolas Cage has surfaced on eBay. And there's only one logical explanation. He's a vampire. Right. The photo, which is being sold by a man from Tennessee, is asking price of one million dollars. Shows the Oscar winning in <laughs> shows the Oscar winning in a Civil War era photograph. But what's even more amazing, it appears that Nicolas Cage hasn't aged a day since the photo was taken. Jack Ford, who is selling the photo on eBay, said, Personally, I believe it's him. And that he he's some sort of walking undead vampire. Etc. <laughs> <laughs> In the universe. Please continue. <laughs> who quickens, reinvents himself once every 75 years or so. 150 years from now, he might be a politician, the leader of a cult, or a talk show host. <laughs> 
According to <laughs> New York Daily News, the photo was taken in 1864 at Johnson's Island Prison Camp in Ohio by Professor G.B. Smith, who was famous for taking portraits of Confederate prisoners during the Civil War. But Moore insists that the photo is of an undead Nicolas Cage, who at the time of the photo may have been a Civil War prisoner. Maud said, my theory is that he allows himself to age to a certain point, maybe 70 or 80 or so, and then the actor, Nicolas Cage, will die. But in rela- reality, the undead vampire, Nicolas Cage, will have rejuvenated himself and appeared in some other part of the world, young again, and ready to start all over. Eve reports that Nicolas Cage has not denied that he is a vampire. He hasn't confirmed it either. Ooh, what do you think? Just a Civil War prisoner? Or are we looking at a definite proof that Nicolas Cage is a vampire? <laughs> you know what I think that is? What? Bullshit! <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. What was that, Belinda? I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't hear over the cough. Both. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. That's a really bad cough you have going on. There. You should have to look at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I did go and look at the picture, and it actually is kind of whoa. Oh. But <laughs> really, that is the only explanation. Have you never heard of the doppelganger theory? Or, you know, family members, or, you know, how many doubles are out in the world? There are, like, millions of people that look exactly the same as someone else. Exactly. It goes along with the doppelganger theory. The theory is that you have someone that looks exactly like you, and I'm so sorry for whoever you are out there for looking like Belinda. I'm kidding. No. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> I love you, Belinda. <laughs> no, but yeah, you know, the theory is, like I said, there is someone out there in the world who looks exactly like you. I have never met my double, but my mother has met my double. Well, I sort of know who my double is, and it's one of my cousins. She looks exactly the same as me. And then you look at that photo I've got on my Facebook of my mum, and I look exactly the same as her. It's creepy, man. Mm-hmm. But it, it it has to be because you're a vampire. It couldn't have any other explanation. Exactly. You know, I got the teeth thing going. And like a burn in the sun. And my nails are long. And I own a cape. <laughs> I own a cape too. Oh my god, does that mean I'm a vampire? <laughs> 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 Apparently, yes. You heard it here first, people. If you own a cape, you are a vampire. And you will be found in pictures all around the world, and you will never die. How can you kill that which is unkillable? But which kind of schmuck is going to go and buy this $1 million photo, supposedly, of Nicolas Cage? I don't know if someone bought it or if it was just taken down because people were like, are you serious? But I tried (laughs) to go to the link that they have posted for the um, eBay thing and it's not there anymore it probably got bought by someone with just a few more dollars than they have since Dave Metallica <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe it was Nicolas Cage himself to hide the evidence stay hidden and all which is why he's an actor yes and you need to speak closer to your microphone love sorry that's okay okay next so yes, um, the story, you know, going along with the pride and happy and gay stuff, and I totally scrolled up instead of scrolling down. So we're back at Germans vote fifteen pirates into Parliament, <laughs> <laughs> which is also happy and gay and 